does it normally take for a package to get to you? A day? A week? A month? How about over three years? Well, something like that happened in India not too long ago. At first glance, it doesn't seem all that surprising. Packages get delayed or even lost along the way all the time. That's just the nature of parcel delivery. But this wasn't some standard package. It was an entire train carriage loaded with tons of compost. Something this massive couldn't have just disappeared and then come back. Or could it? Let's find out. And yes, along the way, we're going to learn some cool things about trains. It all started in 2014, when an Indian company ordered dozens of tons of compost. All the goods were stored in 21 wagons. The train left the city of Vishakhapatnam on November the 10th. Its destination was in Basti district, Uttar Pradesh, 870 miles away. So the train left the station and the trip went smoothly. A few days later, the buyer accepted the goods. 20 wagons arrived in excellent condition, but one carriage, number 107462, was missing. Where could this wagon packed full of fertilizer have gone? Did someone steal the cargo? Did it get lost along the way? The buyer asked the company that sold them the compost to find the missing part of the shipment. The employees checked the documents and confirmed that the train of 21 carriages left the station on November the 10th. Several people from the rail station saw it. Then the train passed through some settlements and lost one carriage. But how? The buyer contacted the railway services but didn't receive any response. It seemed the train car had just disappeared. The documents indicated that all the paid goods went to the destination, which meant the buyer wouldn't get their money back. So they just lost more than $10,000. Months and years had passed, the incident eventually forgotten. But then, on July 25th, 2018, railway workers discovered an old carriage with the number 107462 on it at the station in Basti District, the original destination point. The company contacted the seller about their discovery, but they refused to accept the goods because the fertilizer had rotted long ago. They waited for the owner to come for it, but no one came, and no one reported it missing. So they towed the abandoned train car back to Basti District a few months later. By that time, the buyer had already reported the rail company about the lost compost, and they had already stopped searching for it, while the car was practically right under their noses. To this day, no one knows why the car was disconnected or where it's been all this time. You know where this would have never happened? Japan. There, you can ride the most punctual trains in the world. They arrive at all stations to the minute. All the locals know the trains are never late, so they can never use that excuse on their boss. But if something does happen to cause the train to arrive late, passengers receive a special ticket from the rail company that they can use as proof to protect them from their boss's accusations. Japan has not only the most punctual trains in the world, but also the fastest. I'm talking about maglev trains that can reach speeds up to 374 miles per hour. To give you an idea of how fast that is, the fastest recorded speed set by a Formula One car is 231.4 miles per hour. Not even close to the maglev train just traveling down its normal route. What's more, even if it travels at top speed, you can comfortably sit in your seat and drink tea on the train. You won't feel any vibrations or hear the sound of the wheels because it has no wheels at all. Maglev is short for magnetic levitation. Using the power of magnets, the train is basically suspended, floating just above the railway, meaning they don't actually touch, meaning there's next to no friction. This is what allows maglev trains to reach and then maintain such incredible speeds. Wouldn't it be cool to have such trains in every city? I mean, forget about traffic jams, am I right? But unfortunately, they're not so popular around the world. Charging the train's magnets requires a lot of energy. They heat up to incredibly high temperatures during the trip, and then they need to cool down after. And this also requires a lot of incredibly expensive infrastructure. For many countries, such trains would be simply economically unviable, for now. That carriage in India would probably have been standing at the railway station forever if someone hadn't noticed it. But what if it was a whole train with, let's say, 
A hundred cars? I mean, what do people do with old train cars? Usually they would put old trains in landfills, dismantle them for scrap, dispose of them with pressure compacting, or melt them down. But the most popular practice is to load the bare hulls of wagons onto a big ship and then throw them in the ocean. It's not as wasteful as you think. The trains actually provide a great frame for corals and plant life to grow on them. And soon these overgrown train carriages become homes for fish and other ocean inhabitants. This is how the people in New York decided to get rid of their old trains. From 2001 to 2010, they sank more than 2,000 cars this way. And soon, these trains became artificial reefs. They got completely covered by corals and algae, and shells, crabs, sea sponges, mackerels, perches, and sea turtles settled in each car. Underwater photographers and divers filmed those wagons and even saw dolphins swimming through them. It's like an underwater city where the trains are free real estate for the fish. So, people provided modern housing for the fish and saved about 30 million on recycling. I mean, I use the term modern very loosely. They look more like phantom trains. But you know what the coolest thing about phantom trains is? They actually exist. And you know what's even cooler? You can get in and ride one. You can find such trains in England, in small towns like Sne. Now, imagine you stepped onto the empty train station there. It looks decrepit and abandoned. There's no parking, no ticket machines, no shops. And now you hear the sounds of a train arriving at the station. It seems normal enough. But when you step inside, you'll probably feel some discomfort since you're the only passenger on this phantom train. You can walk from the first carriage to the last one if you like. No one will stop you. You can actually choose from several similar trains. Yeah, there's a lot of them moving all around England. They're left running through abandoned railways because it actually works out economically for the country. To cancel these phantom train routes, you'd need to go through many bureaucratic procedures and spend taxpayers' money. And there's no need to do all of that if the trains just go and don't bother anyone. Also, they attract many tourists and enthusiasts who love to visit abandoned stations. If you're interested, you should know that it's not so easy to find these routes. You need to carefully study train schedules on the internet since not even all the railway workers know about them. In some remote places, the trains arrive only once every few days. But what about real phantom trains? There are many stories about trains that have mysteriously disappeared throughout the years. The most popular one is the legend of the Zanetti train company. Several wagons disappeared with dozens of passengers in a mountain tunnel in Italy in 1911 and then popped up out of the blue in 1845 in Mexico? But of course, there's no evidence for this story. Someone just wrote it in a newspaper and everyone believed it. The same thing happens with planes and ships that supposedly travel through time. Although it's much more common for sailing vessels to become abandoned and then left to sail aimlessly on the seas for decades. There's much more documented evidence of that. But if you really saw a mysterious train arriving at an old railway through the fog in the middle of the night. Would you step inside? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.